can get started again. So the last section of the day is the operating system and the you know, I'll talk about the labs that we have, but you don't have to do them. Uh, once you get available longer after this, to actually uh, play around the system if you want some direction on what to play about. By the time we're done, you'll understand what I mean by this word address space. You'll be able to describe virtual storage. You'll be able to describe paging. You'll be able to list three types of address spaces. You will list three types of memory storage. You'll describe, you'll be able to describe system integrity using key control protection. So as I mentioned, the ZOS operating system, when it's really running, it's inside the mainframe. However, the operating system code is stored on disk. So it's read in off of disk and placed into the operating, placed into the mainframe. And of course, the whole environment, it's got attached tape drives tape, to get the tape cartridges, and it's got consoles. Very high level, hardware resources managed by ZOS. So an address space, I'm going to be talking about that in more detail, but there are many address spaces running. And I'll be talking about what an address space is. I'm also going to be talking, when I use the word storage here, in this uh, ZOS operating system overview, when I use the word storage, I'm, I'm translate that to mean memory instead of disk storage. So storage, we have real storage, like your RAM, and we have auxiliary storage, which is an extension of the RAM, but placed on disk. And then there's this thing called paging. Also, I'm going to be talking about data integrity and some of the characteristics of RAS, reliability, availability, and serviceability. Now, as I put up here, there's no need to know at all how the operating system, how the optics is not required in business applications. One thing I would like for you to understand, though, is this word page, frames, and slots. Now, I will tell you the operating system is broken up into many different things, a PSA, a CVT, the ASCVT. I'm going to talk about all these things. I'm also going to talk about memory management, the DAT, the RSM, the ASM, um, protect keys. Do you need to know all this? No. This is internal to how things work. But I will let you know that I'm going to be discussing all of these, but you don't need to memorize it, and you don't want to memorize it. A few anecdotal stories, same things. And while I'm on this page, I'm going to explain why I came up with a lot of the and three, I believe it was, I was to spend two weeks in Indies to describe ZOS. And one of the things that did, they told me, well, these people are going to be teaching are new to the environment. Fine, this is for people. More requirements came in. One of them said, well, I want to learn how to read. And I thought, well, I could begin to show them that. But they don't need to know that else to memorize and get familiar with other than dump reading. If you, the dump, and then I'm going to give you an anecdotal story about it. Show them a little bit about dumps. Learn that right away. These are the type of things that you need to understand when you're reading a system dump. Not an application dump, but a system dump. Okay, so what is ZOS? Well, I've been meaning to change this statement for quite some time now, and I haven't done it yet. This statement 
that is here first, the most widely used mainframe operating system. It hasn't been true for many years. Thus, is indeed considered the flagship operating, the most widely used operating. I don't care to guess what the most widely used mainframe operating system is. It's obvious. Yes? Let's see if there's a guess. What's the most widely used operating system? There's a guess at VM. It's, it's not TPF. And as soon as I say it, it's going to be obvious. It's not VSC. It's not OS 90. You're all going to go, oh, my goodness. So there's five operating systems. We've named almost all of them, but the most popular one. Uh, who said that? Well, it is because Unix is part of It's Linux. Very so Linux are up. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of Linuxes running in the mainframe environment as part of conserver consultant Linux. So this statement is not accurate. It's not the most widely used mainframe operating system. Linux is the most widely used operating system. Now, ZOS is the 64-bit operating system. That's one of the things that we need to ZOS feature of that was that OS 390 was a 31-bit operating system, 64-bit operating system. The operating system is definitely ideal, ideally suited for processing large workloads of many concurrent users, serving thousands, tens of thousands of concurrent users. It's IO-intensive computing for processing very large workloads, running mission-critical applications securely. The operating system itself is comprised of modules. The components are modules. So there's uh, system information about the system resources and tasks are in something called control blocks that I'll be talking about it later. Management of physical storage. Think there's three types of physical storage management. Real storage manager, auxiliary, virtual that is for managing memory. So an address space. What is an address space? Now typically here, I don't read this. Now and think of everything, every started tab, or every bad, every TSO session actually is an address space. When you log on to TSO, you created an address. When you submit a background CL, that's an address space. When you use JCL, that's an address space. The space technically is. Think of an address space as going from some contiguous number. This goes from zero to some contiguous number, and it's 4K. So the size of the pond what you have in there, program and other things. And so the address space, think of it as going from zero to some, is contiguous to some of the 4K chunks. That's called the virtual storage. The virtual storage goes from zero to some contiguous number and a range that's contiguous, broken up, that's virtual storage. And that virtual storage must exist. So virtual storage is a but the virtual, those 4K chunks have to be managed. So an, I'm repeating myself, an address space is a contiguous area. The operating system itself is a group of address spaces, the application spaces. TSO started tasks are address spaces. So there are system address spaces or started after the initialization of the master scheduler that we're going to talk about in a minute, and then the master scheduler gets involved in starting the other system address spaces, then the application address spaces can be started. All of the middleware, DB2, CICS, Webster Application Server, they are address spaces. As I mentioned, TSOE is an address space when you log on to TSO. Let's talk about the address spaces. So 
most operating systems went through a cycle like this, even Windows. So when we first built MVS, MVS was a 24-bit addressable operating system. That means you could address up to 16 megabytes of virtual storage. Then a 31-bit address space, or excuse me, a 31-bit operating system, and with 31-bit, you could address up to 2 gigabyte for your address space. Now, some people would sometimes would ask, why did IBM do 31-bit and not 32-bit? The person that designed that came up, and Bob just recently retired, and one night I was having dinner with Bob, Bob explained that it was very clever because he used an extra bit for determining whether something was running below the line or above the line. So he stole a bit, but he said, in hindsight, I never should have done that because I needed more address space area. And, that, and he was advising the people when they went to 64-bit, which now you can address up to 16, that's, that's, it. that's, that's chopped off. That should be 16 exabytes. I don't know why it says six. This is, that's 16 exabytes. One six exabytes. And so that's what 64 bit addressing does for you. And bit. don't do that again. So sometimes I hear about below the line, above the line, but maybe below the bar, and above the bar. So, what this is all about is handling the virtual storage. Each can potentially address up to 16 each address space, spaces running concurrently. We're going to talk about that. So when we map out the operating system for the 16 exabytes, what there is inside of the 16 exabytes, some of it is considered private area. Private area means that's for your applications. Code, data you may want. There happens to be, inside the address space, a common area. What a common area is, it's common to all address. Common to all address spaces is operating system code. Every, op every address space has common to all of it. It's and it's the common area, the operating system. As I point out in this slide, what an address space may have in it, going from zero to whatever, it's contiguous. It could have operate, it's, it, it's got virtual storage for operating system code, application code, temporary work areas, system code, metadata. But there's hundreds and thousands of these address spaces running concurrently. You can think of it as an address space as a runtime container. Now, I briefly want to talk about this, just very briefly. There is something called a workload manager, because all these address spaces can be assigned a priority. It can be assigned an import 